Hey, Weather Warriors, come on in. Welcome to this edition of State of the Weather Address. We've got another potential few outbreaks coming here as we head towards Tuesday through Thursday. That's about the 21st through the 23rd across the southern United States, central U.S. But things could be shifting a little bit westward. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the tornado, hail, wind potential. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational extreme weather event breakdowns just like this, much more detailed than you would see on TV. And also comment below, do you like severe weather or do you prefer it not happen in your neighborhood? Because obviously it does cause a lot of damage. So comment below that and we'll get right into it here. So we're looking at Tuesday at 7 p.m. Even though it says Wednesday at 0 Z, it would be around 7 p.m. with the time conversion. And you can see this little line right here. Well, what is that? We're looking at the dew points, okay? And you got 60 dews scooting up out of the Gulf. Now, just before this, you saw that southeastern United States outbreak. It blew cool air into the Gulf, temporarily shut down the moisture supply for much of the United States. But notice that these winds are still out of the east over here. This is extremely important because that cold front wasn't quite strong enough to shunt the cold air all the way into the Gulf. You can see it stops right about there, and it's already starting to sneak back up. Now, as we head towards Tuesday, you need about one or two days of moisture return in the southern United States, at least two, typically. Two days later, there it is. And so we have southeast winds blowing warm, moist air out of an extremely warmer than average Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to set up the potential for some severe weather. Now, you got a dry line right here. There's a moisture change. So it's very dry in western Texas and very moist in eastern Texas and also Oklahoma here. That temperature gradient, where you get dry and then moist. Moist air rises over dense air, so it actually creates a front, which creates lift. The issue is, this is on Tuesday at 102, if you look at the upper levels, there's a 500 millibar uh, height, in, uh, height here. This is going to be our jet, just near and below our jet stream, our wind speeds above. We need about 40 knots of shear to really get storms cranking. You got about 50, 60 knots here. The trough is just a little bit too far west you're actually kind of more under a ridge. Now your storm lift with your upper levels, really that create lift, it's really going to be just to the east of that jet streak where that divergence is, where that upper level air is ripping apart and sucking up air at the surface. It's gonna be uh, more like Texas and New Mexico. The issue is the dry lines out ahead of that. So if we do get storms, they'll be uh, very isolated, might be a little uh, MCS or something that rolls through northern Texas and Oklahoma. But if we do get something to pop, there could be a decent supercell or two in Texas along that dry line. So we'll have to watch that. But as you can see, as we go a day later here, around, uh, around uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m. or so, now the trough is well into Oklahoma. It's not the best looking setup, but we do have lots of divergence here, very good shear. Be a, a nice little setup in the eastern plains into the southeastern United States as we head towards Wednesday. Again, this is uh, getting a little far up, but I just wanted to warn you guys in advance that there could be severe weather. And then potentially uh, the east central part of the United States. But you'll notice even more flow coming on. And I think this will start to deepen and potentially give the central, cent central and southern United States another shot maybe even all the way up to Nebraska, of severe weather as we head later into the week and later into April. But we're focusing on the Tuesday through uh, Thursday time period here. So we're going to focus on that for now. Now, if we uh, look at the instability, this is going to measure the power in the atmosphere, the, it's the lift, okay? And as you see, Tuesday, we obviously have tons of that in place. And then we got winds blowing across the dry line. So what that's going to do is if you get storms to blow up along the dry line, the upper level jet is going to blow them off into this warm, moist atmosphere, and that's going to help them really get going, uh, blow up. And obviously that wind shear blows the updraft, all that rain away from the updraft so the storms can keep building. So it's a very potent environment here in parts of Texas, all of Texas and Oklahoma. Again, the issue is that the main piece of energy is just a little bit too far off to the west. And uh, if we look at the capping, you know, typically, if you if you get a jet that's a little bit too far off to the west, sometimes you'll get a little more capping than usual, and there is a little bit of capping still there. So the, the clear areas, the white areas, are uncapped. You can see there's a few areas. Uh, there's obviously that more that more that goes into this, but there is some capping, 
Uh, but we'll see a couple of isolated storms potentially on Tuesday. And again, if they do go in their surface base, we could see some pretty severe weather. Again, isolated for the most part. Supercell composite, very elevated in the southern plains. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. And uh, we'll go to the, uh, this is pivotalweather.com. It's a great website. You guys can actually follow along uh, as we do these Bob Ross style, you know, like you paint and then you, you paint with them. Well, you guys can actually follow along and draw things on maps, kind of find things. And let's get back to that real quick. But yeah, we're looking at Tuesday at around, well, we're looking at it at zero Z, so that's 7 p.m. And again, you see that dry line right there. And uh, we'll look at the uh, composite reflectivity. So is there storms gonna break out? Well, the GFS has a couple of storms in Oklahoma. Again, if they do develop, it might be elevated along and north of the warm front. But if we do get supercells in Texas, like this potentially indicates, the GFS is not a really good model for convection, but we do look at signals sometimes. There could be some potent severe weather, but again, it's going to be mostly isolated, and the main threat will be up in Oklahoma, where I think things will be more elevated, MCS-like, if we do get severe weather on Tuesday. Let's go to Wednesday now. This is a much different story. Now, the jet stream is right over this area now. There's tons of divergence. And that's going to help lift things at the surface. We've got a deep low pressure. Well, not really terribly deep, but a, a decent low pressure system. You know, cold fronts, really a cold front now is caught up with the dry line, but you got very cold, dry air coming in. And probably a warm front, you know, somewhere in this zone up here. And what that's going to do is you got your moisture here. There, there's going to be a decent little setup here in eastern Oklahoma, west eastern Texas the potentially uh, western Arkansas and Louisiana. as so The map gets ridiculously messy, but these are your main areas. And where you see these fronts intersect, that is where your tornado threat and hail and wind's going to be. So we're going to really watch eastern Oklahoma. It's way too early to be talking about tornadoes. I know there's a lot of hype going around. Again, the threat for tornadoes is increasing. I'm just not going to say specifically when, where, and how strong yet. But... This does look uh, very interesting. Now, if we click on these soundings, this is a vertical profile in the atmosphere. You can actually look at the profile and we get that, that spin in the atmosphere. You got winds out of the southeast of the surface and winds out of the west and the southwest up in the upper levels, 50, 60 knots. There's a lot of directional shear and a lot of speed shear. So it changes direction and speed with height. That creates horizontal tubes of rotation in the atmosphere, which can be turned vertically into tornadoes. So that's very important as well. Not only does it help the storms live longer and be stronger, but it helps the tornado potential as well. Instability, got a little bit of that. And the possible hazard type is tornado in the atmosphere. So it's definitely something we're watching for the Southern Plains on Tuesday. If you look at the instability, the power in the atmosphere, the updraft potential here, it's uh, decent. It's not uh, crazy, but we got one to 2,000. So that's plenty with the wind shear we have. If you look at the Upper level flow, there's lots of flow in this area. And then the low level jet, this is going to be transporting moisture out of the Gulf. Very impressive, especially for the plains. You got winds out of the uh, southwest at 40 to 50 miles an hour, eastern Oklahoma. That's hauling moisture out of the Gulf. It's also adding to that wind shear just off the surface. It's blowing powerful, powerful moisture and instability into these storms, creating very dynamic environments. So this whole entire batch right here could be under some severe weather. So western parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, eastern Oklahoma, Texas here on uh, Tuesday. So we're going to watch that. And then 7 p.m., this is already out into the southeastern United States, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. This is going to be critical because this is uh, moving very fast and occludes very fast. So the storm blows up and kind of dies out really quickly. So when that happens, you know, if it happens any earlier, the setup might actually not be all that impressive. It happens a little bit later. We could be dealing with a big time tornado outbreak from Texas into Oklahoma, Arkansas to Louisiana, maybe even Mississippi. But if this thing occludes really quickly, it'll be mostly kind of a wind and a rain event across the southeastern United States and be much further south uh, to the east. But again, we're watching this entire zone right here. It's uh, definitely some signals we're watching. Uh, as you head towards uh, like the day on Thursday here, we'll go into the southeastern United States and look at that because I'll try to find a better view here. We'll go into the southeastern 
United States. And we'll go around 1 p.m. here and we'll look at the, the upper levels. You can see that the jet stream is right over the southeastern United States, a little trough here. Look at the moisture here. The moisture is going to be really far off to the east. You see some recovery already, so that's potentially indicating. Well, it's it, what's going on is it's circulating some moisture back around it, so that low kind of dies out. So you actually might see some uh, some rain showers even. But out ahead of this thing, it's kind of disorganized, so the surface flow is variable. It just doesn't look quite as impressive on uh, Thursday. But again, if this slows down any, this would put the southeastern and east central United States under the gun for severe weather. If it can slow down just a bit and not close off so quickly. But right now it, it does look to race to the east, but there could be some severe weather in the Carolinas and the southeastern United States on Tuesday. There's plenty of moisture and the winds are out of the south and there's a jet stream right over top. Again, instability typically dies out when you get these surface pressures to occlude really quickly. And you can see that right there. There's just not as much instability, but there's still, there's still enough. All you need is about 750 to 100 for severe weather. Unfortunately, the same area again, that's been getting hammered with severe weather. This is at 7 p.m. You can see that. So there could be some severe weather in the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, and uh, Florida as we head towards uh, Thursday as well. So it's something we're definitely going to one watch. Tornado threat's going to be the strongest probably out in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana. But again, tornado th tornadoes are extremely finicky. That'll change quite a bit from now and then. But the general severe weather threat, especially for Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, very uh, much higher as we head towards uh, Tuesday. So with that, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Share this with a friend. Hope you enjoy this video, and we'll see you soon.